Hi Tessie. How are you today? I'm good. So today we have Ansi. She's gonna be making our first dish and it's a very famous um, dish here in America. Hamburgers. That's right Tessie. Every restaurant, every menu, you will always find burgers listed. I love hamburgers. They're so tasty. Yes. You know, usually they're grilled. Mm -hmm. We're gonna be doing it on a makeshift grilled oh, here. Oh, awesome. Okay. And they'll be just as good. Okay, so. What do we have, yes. all right? So, so our main attraction is our ground beef, and you can use different uh, cuts. Mm -hmm. This is about 80% lean and 20% fat. Wow. You kinda wanna keep some of that fat in there so the juiciness comes out when you're making it, but. So do you have to pick it up um, specifically when you go to the store, you have to yes. make sure it has that specific fat. Right, and you know, you want to have some fat, so you never want to do like a 90% or a 90% okay. lean, 10% fat, okay. because that's just not enough juiciness. And so this is a good number, ratio, 80-20. Uh, okay. We have our buns, sesame seed uh, hamburger buns. And then we have all of our toppings. First off, some lettuce. Good, pickles. You can put them on the burger itself, as a side, whatever your preference is. So I've got a couple of those there. We have ketchup, mayonnaise, onions, and you can use the red onions, white onions, whatever you prefer. I got some red onions there. And of course, some nicely sliced tomatoes. Good, and then of course, you know, salt, salt and, and pepper. pepper to which taste. is the usual. Yes. So All what right. are we gonna do first? Well, first off, we can, you know, heat our pan up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, just kind of to a medium low, just to get it nice and warm while we form our patties. And so we have our beef, mm -hmm. and the thing is, you can always put the seasonings right into the meat, but okay. the problem is that you will get, all that salt will pull the juices out. Oh, and yeah. And you don't want to... You, nice, you want it nice and juicy. Exactly. It really good it's Exactly. Juicy. So, I like to not put any seasonings right in my beef. Okay. It's washed, it's ready to go. First thing though, I'm gonna have you bring me that bowl over yes. there. And you're probably thinking this is really strange. Yeah, there's ice in here. There's ice water in here. And the thing is, we wanna put our hands into the ice water. Okay. And the reason for that is that we don't even want the warmth of our hands melting the fat. Interesting. We, we wanna keep our hands cold. So you don't want any salt touching, no seasoning. No. Nope. And you don't want our warm Nope, touching and if meat. you can take this right out of the fridge and start forming it, better. Or if okay. you even so if, if you, you leave it overnight, mm -hmm. or if you want to put it, make the fatties and then put it back in the fridge, even better. Okay. So you know, different things you can try. Thank you. Okay. And so what I have here is 12 ounces of meat. Mm -hmm. We can cut that and make nice two, uh, six ounce. Oh, so we're, we can make two. We can make two patties. So I'm two just gonna patties. kind of bring it. Okay. In the middle. Good. And you can grab one piece. Okay. And our hands are nice and cold to do this yep. right now. Good, and you are just forming. You know how a patty looks. Yeah. Start with a nice round ball. And the, the thing is, try not to work too much. Remember, we gotta, we can't let our the warmth of our mm -hmm. hands melt this meat. Okay. When you make burgers, okay. they tend to dome up, if, especially if they're really, really flat. So there's a way you have to shape it. Right, so if you put that on the grill, they will dome up, mm -hmm. and when it domes up, it's not evenly cooked. Okay. So a trick that you can do is to kind of push it down in the I've center. I've seen that before, and I've always wondered what they were doing. Right, and it's really strange, but it works. That helps prevent it from doming up. Right. Okay. Okay, and because these are worked on, we're gonna put this in the fridge for a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? And then we will wash our hands and we'll get back to grilling. Okay. All right. So Tessie, mm -hmm. our meat is nice and cold, our patties are formed, and- It was sitting in the refrigerator for how long? For about 10, 15 minutes. Okay. And now it's ready for the grill. 
Okay. And All right. How high did you put the girl? So on we're for? gonna keep it a little lower now until we get them on there, and then we can bring it up a little higher. Okay. Um, and now is when we're gonna start seasoning. And the reason for that, like I said, you don't want all those juices out. Out. Mm -hmm. Okay. So from so you let it cool a little bit, and now you're gonna put the now seasoning. you're gonna put it in there. So okay. I've got salt here, just a little bit on this side, and then when we're done on that side, you can put a lot of pepper if you like it. Okay, and then we're just gonna put it right onto the, the grill. That looks really good already. And that sizzle is what we wanna hear. Is there a certain time that you have to leave it on the grill for? So that's, that was gonna be my next, next thing. So the next question after you get to a restaurant and you order a burger, a burger. when you order a burger, the first question, the next first yeah. question that they're going to ask you is how would you like it done? And that's the same for steak or any kind of meat. Any meat that you eat, yeah. Right. And they'll ask you how do you want it to be done? And what they're trying to see is well, you know, well cooked or as you're if you want it raw, or if you want it juicy. Right, and the thing if is, if you want a bird, <laughs> if you are at a good restaurant, you can have a rare meat mm -hmm. and still, you know, it will it'll still be cooked. Okay. Just not, there'll still be some pink in there. And the reason for that, um, you have this scale, well done, and you have rare. Mm -hmm. In the middle, you have medium. Okay. So it's a, a scale. And the thing is that when the chef makes a dish, it's well done in the dish, mm -hmm. but meat tends to cook for a while afterwards. So when you put it on the okay. plate, when the, chef, the waiter is bringing it to you, there's a long time for that, and the meat will still continue to cook. So if you order a well done dish, steak, sometimes it'll be cardboard. It's true, I mean, I've ordered at restaurants, and you know, I don't like it too raw or like too juicy, so I say well done, but what happens is it turns out to be a cardboard, mm -hmm. which you don't want to eat. Which you don't want to eat, and yeah. so you have to be mindful of that. Steak, I would say, is where that rule applies the most. Mm -hmm. Burgers, you you can say well done, yeah. it'll be fine. So, and another trick to it is, you see this part of your skin here? Uh -huh. The way it feels at this part okay. versus the way it feels over here, two different feelings, right? It is, yeah. Right. So this is about a medium rare, and this is about a medium well. So that's... Yeah. Everyone tries to at home. It feels very different. So that's for the chef, right? So I'm not gonna poke on this side because it's rare, but when we flip it over, we'll be able to kind of get a sense of how much springiness is it and what level of cooked it is. Okay. Okay? And we have the... We have it in the, we put our hand to like make sure it doesn't dome over. Right? Yep. And that's what it's doing. So we can put this on this side for about uh, two to three minutes. We can monitor it. And that's why I'm kind of lifting it up to see as long as it's not like. Yeah, it's getting nice and brown on the other side. Right. So much more. So then eventually we'll be able to flip it, season that side, and then it'll be ready to go. Hey, I can't, I can't wait for this. Right, <laughs> definitely. All right, so these look like they're ready to be turned. Put the seasoning on yep. it and some seasoning on that one. These, this side. There you go. Some pepper. Pepper. And you can, you know, you can season whatever you like. Thyme, so if you want less basil, salt. Whatever, whatever you like. You can control it that way. Whatever flavorings. But the, the key or the importance of a hamburger is the toppings. And that's why we have a variety here. Okay. This is by far not the most you could put. You can put a ton of different things on these burgers. This is good. And you know, it'll continue to cook for a while. You can, you know, another variation or a lot of, another popular way of modifying this is to make it a cheeseburger. Nice. So I didn't bring any cheese, but yeah, you, you could, could always put cheese. And yeah. this would be the part where you could put a slice of cheese on there, cover melt it up, nice. and let it melt nicely. Okay, and so, you know, it's starting to cook, but do you see the, the springiness mm -hmm. over here? And that's, that's how, how we were talking with That's how we were talking with So this is a little bit more on the rare side, and some people eat their burgers rare. It's fine, you know, another thing for all the people who grill and make burgers. Number one rule about how you cook this thing, do not press down on it. So Why? Was there a reason behind it? It is so tempting to just push down and get all those juices out. And, and then it cooks it, faster too, right? It cooks faster, but you are getting rid of all those juices. So all the taste is being well the taste. So never press down on a burger. Just let it cook on itself. Mm -hmm. Then it'll be just as good. But if you 
pressure all those juices out. Half the time, if you're on an open flame, all that is going into the charcoal anyway. Yeah. But that sizzling, everybody gets you know excited with the the, the smoke and the, you know. <laughs> you can even see in the middle like the red is starting to mm -hmm. disappear. So I am going to turn off the, the heat, okay? And we're gonna let this. Um, kind of sit for a little bit. Cook by itself. Cook by itself for a little bit and we will let it rest. Uh -huh. Don't touch it. And then we will start building our hamburger. Okay. It's okay. always good to cool. Yes. So we've had our burgers resting. cooking and they're resting for a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, it smells good in here, It does right? smell good. I am hungry to try this. Okay? <laughs> I'm ready to put this all together right now. <laughs> right, so let's start building. You know, we, our meat has been resting okay. for a little bit and you know, the juices are kind of resettling. You yeah, want you them- you can see on the plate, right? Right, and you want them to, that you, do, you should do that with a lot of uh, red meats. You should mm -hmm. let it settle for a little bit to let the juices redistribute between the whole thing. A lot of it will be, you know, coming out to the edges, not a lot of juiciness inside. So you always wanna leave your meat for a little bit to kind of rest and redistribute. Okay. And then we can, you know, we have our buns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Just gonna open there, too. there is no order to this test. <laughs> However, this bottom bun will tend to get very soggy. Yes, because with the of the burger. So, hint, put a lettuce piece on the bottom. Interesting. Right on the bottom. I know it doesn't look like a certain order, mm -hmm. but you can keep your bun from getting soggy just by doing that. It looks nice already. Right? Now, you can put your condiments. You just keep putting in whatever you want. Well, for, so we'll start with our uh, sauces, okay? okay? So a little bit of ketchup. You know, and I know people who love ketchup, so you can put as, <laughs> are you a ketchup fan? I love ketchup. You I can, love my sauces. <laughs> you can put as much ketchup as you like. Mayonnaise, as much as you'd like. So is there, um, is there any variations to sauces you can do other than ketchup and so mayonnaise? So some people like to put barbecue sauce right on their okay. burgers. Um, that's fine, and that's fine. I've heard my honey mustard. Honey mustard people do, or Dijon mustard, different kinds of mustards. They, some people like to put relish, Ooh, which is like okay. a variation of what we have here, pickles kind of chopped up and it's a little bit sweeter. Mm -hmm. So some people like to put sweet relish on it. That's more of hot dogs in my, in my, in my <laughs> yeah, universe. Yeah, relish and some mustard. Right, in my universe. Yeah. But people <laughs> love it all. Different variations. You can put bacon. Okay. Bacon crumbs. You can use different types of lettuce. Spinach you can put on there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, let's put our patties on. Oh, let me get some mayonnaise. I forgot my mayonnaise. And you see how you know how big we started off and how these burgers shrunk a little bit? Yes, it was a, a lot bigger than that will happen when you have uh meat. I think I put it on the wall. That's okay. Right on here. Thank you. Okay, and put out all the rest of it. Yep, right? tomatoes and onions. The, the thing is, you know, they have all these places where you have giant burgers that definitely How do you don't eat that. Well, <laughs> those are challenges here. If you can finish the whole burger, you can, you know, you get a prize or whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I don't even know if this will fit. <laughs> but we'll see. Exactly. Do you want to cut these pickles or so just? So I like to keep my pickles on the side. Okay. So then here you go. So a nice crispy pickle. Just, just on the side. One right there for myself too. Okay. And close your. Burger. Already the juice is coming out. And right, and that's, you know, that's... And it's we, because we didn't press on the, right, and the people, burger. Right, and people think that it's uncooked, it's not healthy for you. As long as meat gets to a certain temperature, mm -hmm. it's fine to eat. Okay. It's just the juiciness that we want to eat. Look at that. That looks very cooked. Nice and cooked. Beautiful. On the right, so let's dig in. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll take one of these halves. You can... I'll just Take your half. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Wow. This tastes like I'm eating at a restaurant. Mm -hmm. It's delicious. Speechless. <laughs> Mostly because there's a lot of food in here. <laughs> yes. But it's good, right? You see that you, you know, you taste the difference. Thank you, Auntie. Juiciness. Yeah. Yeah. And let's have a little piece of pickle. Yes. Crispy pickle. Nice combination. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ansi, for making a delicious 
hamburger for us today. I hope you enjoy yeah. this and try it at home. It's so tasty and nice and juicy, just to the right level. Thank you and no, have thank you, Jesse. I had fun. Thank you. As we know, we have Shani with us and she's gonna help us make an amazing pastry and she will let us know what exactly, what are we making today. With all those frying and you know, the heavy food, definitely this, this is gonna satisfy your too sweet tooth. So let's ask, ask Shani, what are we making today? Jerry, we're gonna be making scones. Oh, scones, I heard about it. You have? So like yeah. they're like a biscuit-like pastry that's common in Britain during tea time. Oh. We'll go over the ingredients and I'll tell you a little bit more about what scones are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's start with our big bowl. We okay. have flour, so that's about one and three fourth cup flour. And it's all purpose flour. Next, we have uh, five tablespoons of milk. And you can use whatever fat milk you want. This is 2%, but you could always use full fat or 1% or skim milk. It's to your liking. Okay. Then we have one egg. Okay, we have one third cup butter cubed up, and that's about one and uh, five and one third tablespoons of butter. And we want it nice and cold, so if you can, keep it in the fridge until you have to use it. Okay. okay? Next, we have one fourth teaspoon salt. Okay. Then we have two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. And lastly, we have three tablespoons of white granulated sugar. Okay. And you're gonna need a little bit more flour and sugar uh, after we make our dough because we're gonna need it to put the dough on and also to sprinkle on the top. So let's get started. Mm -hmm. Okay? So we have our we have a nice big mixing bowl here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna separate our wet ingredients and our dry ingredients. Okay? Oh, okay. So by dry ingredients, I mean the flour, the sugar, baking powder, and salt. Oh, okay? Mm -hmm. So you can go ahead and go ahead and hand me the flour. Thank you. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the whole thing in. If you can get uh, pre-sifted flour, or if you can sift it, that would be great. And that just means just getting all the lumps out of the flour, oh, okay. so that it's smoother when you mix it up. Okay, and then our sugar. So in Britain, scones are less sweet than in, let's say, America, because in America they also make scones. But in Britain, the scones are a little bit less sweet. And that's because, you know, they put jam and cream on their mm -hmm. scones. So rather than the sugar and the fat being in the actual dough, it's on the biscuit, on the scone after you make it. Okay. okay? So let's have our baking powder. Thank you. The baking powder will just, of course, help it rise. And lastly, we have some salt. Whenever there's a little bit of sugar, we like to add a little salt. Okay. This just brings out the sweetness and just gives it a little extra flavor. There you go. I'm gonna mix it around. And now, in this next step, what we're gonna do is we have our cubed butter. Okay. And you know, here we get butter in a nice big log, and yeah. I just chopped it up. And I'm gonna put the cubes of butter, okay. thank you, just all around. Try not to handle it too much because we wanna keep it nice and cold. Okay, so, Sean, good question. Mm -hmm. uh, why do we want like cold butter? So we want cold butter because it helps the dough um, be a little bit more flaky and light once you cook it. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's why we want our butter to be nice and cold. I mean, it's not going to hurt if the butter is a little bit soft or warm. Mm -hmm. That just makes the dough a little bit more dense so that the scone will come out a little bit more cake-like. Mm. So I mean, it's not going to hurt the flavor or anything. So I'm just sprinkling it around. I might have to go in with my hands again, okay? okay? So what I'm doing now, I'm gonna use my fork and just cut the butter into the flour. So cutting it in just means you're not mixing it, you're still incorporating it, but you're just cutting it in. You want pieces of the butter to be incorporated into the flour. And at this stage, you know, you don't need the butter to be completely mixed in. 
because again, you don't want the butter to be melted. Mm -hmm. So you can use a fork, a pastry cutter, whatever you have, but if it's not getting where you want it to, I'm gonna, you just go in with your hands, which is what I'm gonna do right now, okay? okay? We normally try to make it traditional, so that's why, you know, we're not using, you know, equipments and exactly. heavy stuff, so we're just trying to make it simple, that's it. While I'm doing this, Jerry, can mm -hmm. you do me a favor and crack that egg yeah. into the bowl? Show us your technique, Jerry. No. Okay, I'm not good at this, but I'll try my best. Perfect, that's all we need. Okay. We can get any shell in, and if you did, do you know what a trick is to get the shell out? No. You use the eggshell itself. You use it to scoop out the eggshell, and it comes right out. Wow, <laughs> so I think this definitely is gonna be helpful next time. And our flour is ready. You wanna go ahead and take a look? It looks like oh. crumbs, right? Yeah, so I think it's perfectly Mixed with, you know, with the flour and, you know, the, the sugar, I guess, everything is, everything that is we perfect put in. now. Yeah, so I'm just gonna wipe my hands. And what I did was I made a little well mm -hmm. in here, as you can see. I'm just gonna throw this out. I made a little well because once we cover, once we mix our wet ingredients, we're just gonna pour it right in and slowly incorporate it in, okay? So we have our egg. Go ahead and beat it for me. Okay, so I think most of the egg is beaten now. Okay, so you can take that egg and put it into our uh, milk. So those are our, dry, our wet ingredients. Dry okay. ingredients, wet ingredients. You want me to pour it on top of it? Exactly, just pour it all in mm -hmm. and give that a good mix. Flour looks like right now, like I said, it's the coarse crumb. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice, right? You can see that most of it is being perfectly mixed, the, you know, the butter. Yeah. Especially, it's broken down into small pieces and yes. perfectly mixed with the but dough. But there's still little chunks of butter, which is totally fine. Okay. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour our wet into our dry, okay? Into the little well that we made. And I'm just going to use my fork to slowly incorporate it in. You don't want to over mix this because you don't, we don't want our scones to be tough. Mm -hmm. Okay? So I put in about six tablespoons of milk. But if you find that your dough is a little bit dry, yep. you can always put another tablespoon of milk. And conversely, if you think your dough is too wet, you can put in more flour. So do you want to know more about scones, Jerry? Yeah, so I just, you know, I was wondering when you said about when we, the British people normally have it during tea time. So yes. why, I just want to know more about that. Sure, so around 1840s, right? Mm -hmm. There was this Duchess of Bedford. She was feeling hungry. Mm -hmm. It was after lunchtime, before dinner time, around four o'clock, and she thought, hmm, I'm kind of hungry. Mm -hmm. So she called her servants and she, and she said, bring me some tea and some pastry, something to eat. Okay, and that's how this tea time originated. So it's called cream tea. It's not tea with cream, but that's the name of the actual tea time. It's called cream tea. Cream tea, okay. Mm -hmm. And so it consists of tea with scones, and jam and clotted cream. So how the British like to eat their scones is they cut it open and they put some jam and clotted cream in. Now I'll tell you what that is. I'm actually just gonna go in with my hands just to put that dough together, okay? Okay, so we have a nice dough here. I'm gonna get our cutting board, we're gonna flour it and then we're gonna put it out, cut it and put it in our oven, okay? So okay. I'm gonna go get the cutting board and we'll be right back. All right, okay. So we've made our dough, mm -hmm. and we have our cutting board with our milk, sugar, and flour, okay? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some flour. Yeah, please get that out of the way. Thank you. So I'm just gonna flour this, because we don't want anything to stick to the board. That just gives us some extra trouble. All right, that's good. So let's take our dough out. <coughs> See how it's formed into a beautiful oh, yeah. dough? Okay, so again, like I said, we're not gonna knead it. I'm just gonna spread it out slightly with my fingers. Okay, so let me sprinkle a little bit more on top. Okay, perfect. 
So next thing we're gonna do is we have a little bit of milk, mm -hmm. okay? If you don't wanna use milk, you can use some egg wash, that works too. Basically, we're gonna put it on the top. It's gonna help it brown a little bit. We don't want it to be too brown. Its main purpose is so that the sugar is gonna stick because we're gonna put some mm -hmm. more granulated sugar on top, okay? So let me just take this brush. Okay, next thing is we're gonna take our sugar, okay? Now if you have brown sugar or turbinado sugar, anything that has like big granules, that would be even better because it gives it a good crunch after you bake it. And you might think, you know, this is a lot of sugar, but the actual dough itself doesn't have too much. So putting a little bit on top is only gonna add to the flavor. It's not gonna hurt too much. Okay, so I think that's enough. It's nice and done. So let's take our knife and I'm just gonna cut it. So depending on how big you want the scones or how small you want them, you're gonna cut them. I'm gonna cut it about maybe into six, seven, eight. We'll see, we'll see as I cut them. Okay. And this is just a very basic scone. Okay. Like you could add raisins, currants, date, oops, mm -hmm. dates, whatever you want. Okay, but we're just making a very basic scone. So I'm gonna take these, okay. and I have a baking tray mm -hmm. that's lined with parchment okay. paper. And I've already preheated the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? So you need it that high, just let it preheat. We're gonna place our scones on here nicely. And scones don't necessarily have to be sweet. They're savory scones. There's some with cheese and bacon. This is a little bit more traditional. So as I told you, we're just moving, you know, we only wanted to show you something which is traditional, so that's why we're using more of our hands and, mm -hmm. you know, just showing the exact way what they used to do back in those days. Exactly. Let's get a nice pretty pattern here. It's all ready to go in the oven. And I think our oven has preheated. Let's okay. go ahead and place it in. All right. Okay, so we've taken out our scones. Wow, How they, nice do they look? They really looks nice, amazing. Right? They've risen well because of our baking powder. Mm -hmm. We've got our nice sugar on top that's crystallized and it's nice and crunchy when you bite into it, but you'll see when you try. Look at the size. It's but from, I know. From that small size to, you know, just looking perfect pastry. I know, right? Let me put it out for you. It's really good. So what we have here is a little bit of grape jelly. Oh, okay. Yes. So what I want you to do, Jerry, nice. cut into a scone of your choice, okay. put some jam inside, some jelly, and try it. Mm -hmm. so, how do we eat this? So just cut into it and put mm -hmm. some jelly inside. Okay. Just taking some jelly. Just put okay, it on Okay, that top. works too, yeah. yeah. As long as you get some jelly on there. Okay. All right. Just coat it on top of it. And here we go. Amazing, Johnny. <laughs> It was really good. Oh my God. With the, the, the heavy food and all those frying, a perfect, you know, it's perfect compliment for as a dessert, you know, to finish off. This dessert will really satisfy your sweet tooth. So it was really good. Thank Annie. you. It's nice and light so that you don't feel too full after you eat it. That's why it's an afternoon tea snack. Not so sugary. You know, you can feel the milk and you know, it's perfect for your health too as well. Mm -hmm. So hope to see you again. Definitely. And, and hope our viewers also like it. And we will see you soon. Please try it at home. Bye.